Hey, let it be so. Praise the Lord. For all the wise men, wise virgins, let's carry on. Let's understand how to press in and hear what God has for us as we understand the core principle of hearing God and obeying Him. The more, guys, the more complicated life is going to become into the end time. The more complicated a lot of stuff is going to be, the more simple the gospel will be. The key, one of the major keys for the end time, not to go into deception, is not to go for every petty little thing and try to understand. It's going to become more absurd. It's going to become more irrational. It's going to become more complex humanity. Because the, how can I say, the foolishness of the world will be exposed. But the wisdom of God will come through his church. But for those who enter the kingdom as little children, little children with sincere child faith. Amen. Childlike faith. And may God help you that you will grow in simplicity. There's beauty in simplicity in your relationship with God. Beauty in simplicity. Let's say beauty in simplicity. Let it be so. Now we've done so far with hear and obey good works dead works if you didn't get the teaching get the past 12 sundays teaching um, on the our father's own channel please work through it please work through it i'm going to say that for the next 10 sundays but we are today not with abcd q or we are with q and q question your quality okay Will you be prepared that, to put a question mark behind a lot of stuff that you do, not to doubt yourself, but because you believe you can do even better. Not to criticize yourself in a negative way. In a negative way. But guys, we need to know that we can grow from glory to glory. Amen. And if I'm mature enough, I can take it when people would, in, according to me, criticize my work, criticize my attitude, criticize a lot of things. Aye, and we must grow in maturity for that. Why? Because if I understand God has only the best for me, God has only the best for me, then I will take discipline. When I say question your quality means like, God, in what I've done and who I am and what I do, where is the, the areas where, where you don't have the central stage? Where you, don't ha where you are not welcome to do what you want to do? Where I'm obeying and honoring other voices more than your voice, Lord. For me not to be out of trouble and not in trouble, but because I desire more of him in my life. You still here? Let's quickly go with the first verse, Hebrews 12. And have you completely forgotten the divine word of appeal and encouragement? A word of encouragement when there's correction. You need to connect encouragement and correction. But correction, many times we feel discouraged when we are corrected in certain things in our lives. No, forgetting the word of appeal and encouragement in which you are reasoned with and addressed as sons. Not as stupid, but as sons. My son, do not think lightly or scorn to submit, submit to correction and discipline to the Lord of the Lord, nor lose courage or give up. And faint when you are reproved or corrected by him. Oh man, it's absolutely a time of go to the left, go to the right. When people take offense, when somebody is corrected, he's like, that guy just nails me. You always see something wrong with me. Uh, it all depends if you believe that person is in control of your life. If that person is your God, okay. But if the Lord is God, if the Lord is God, then if the guy come and he do it with the wrong attitude, if he does it with pride or whatever, you bring what was brought to you before the Lord. Say, God, that guy says this, 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 this. What are you saying? 
Because there's an enemy from hell ready, ready to condemn you. But there's the Holy Spirit living in you to bring conviction of sin. So sin is a reality in my life. It's a reality in your life. It's a reality. But some other spirit going to use it in a certain way. Holy Spirit going to show you the sin so that you can change. Change for the better. Every demon going to show it to you and tell you, you are not worth it. Look what a mess you made. You are the product of your choices. But Holy Spirit, when he brings conviction of sin, Holy Spirit will also remind you of quality decisions in your life that you made. Holy Spirit will remind you the day when you gave your life to Christ and you became a true, a true, a true child of God. And if God wants to bring discipline on your life, if God wants you to question things that you are doing many times, to say, God, is this from you? Is this not from you? How much from you? How much not? How much is a good idea but not a God idea in the works that I'm doing? I receive that because I believe I'm a true child of God. If you believe you're a fake, don't take correction. If you believe you're a fake, Christianity is a fake thing in your life, fake story, then don't take correction. Don't put you with somebody that can speak into your life when you don't like it, where they say things that you don't like. This whole scripture, this whole chapter of Hebrews 12 has to do with how do you see discipline? A discipline does not seem pleasant. Why will he submit to the correction and the discipline of the Lord? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten the word of appeal? Hell will make sure that you forget. Hell will make sure and try his best for you to forget. Not to receive correction. And the issue to submit to correction, that's not easy. That's not easy. The first place, my brother and my sister, the pl first place where brother would slaughter his brother was when the brother was not open for correction. Adam and Eve, two sons. And Cain, his offering was not accepted. Why? Because the offering is through the blood. Even though what you've done in your, in, in your business, in how as a farmer he was working, he brought, he brought an offering to the Lord. He, he was sincere, but he was sincerely wrong because in the offering there's the blood. It's the blood offering that's going to give us the forgiveness of sins. So Abel brought the blood offering and instead of being there and say, God, you are with me, you, you created me. What was wrong in what I've done? I cannot see something wrong in what I've done. And when he was not open for the correction, to question the quality of what he had brought before the Lord, he was one of the best agents to kill his brother. Let's slaughter one another out of the place of jealousy, self-justification. Feeling this is unfair. That was not right. That, this was not right. What those guys did. Hello. What the Sutu did to the Zulu. What the Zulu did to this one. What the Afrikaans did to the English. What the English did to the Afrikaans. What the, what the whiteies did to the, uh, the darker ones. What the darker ones did to the, did to the lighter ones. It's not actually white. There's actually no white or black. Did you know that? If I'm white, you will freak out. You will run. Where's white? Look at your book and see what's white. <laughs> okay, what are we? I'm talking nonsense. Where am I now? I'm with the thing of correction. When you can receive discipline. Instead of Cain saying, God, I'm, I'm your child. What must change? I compare myself with somebody else and I feel this was unfair and I start destruction. You can start the destruction for your own life. Thy Cain brought the destruction on himself. God said the sin is behind the door. There's many demons, there's a lot of rubbish behind the door waiting for you to open the door. And one of the main ways it happened was that man was not open for correct, correction. Hello. 
That's a good one. Bring your corruption for God's correction. Yeah, let's remember that one. Yeah, amen. Ah, hallelujah. Don't think lightly. That means when we speak into into one another's lives when we look at the word and the holy spirit don't take it lightly don't like it oh that's nice yes i agree this is good let it be serious when god wants to bring correction to your life it can save you and a lot of other people submit to the correction to the discipline of the lord that pilot he better be open for correction he better be open for discipline But he's not anybody that can be a pilot with a Boeing. You must be lekker awake. Him with wakker wees. You must have some, what's the good word for savvy? You must have something up there. You must know what you're doing. But there's discipline, there's discipline, there's discipline, there's focus. You cannot take lightly a correction being brought to you because there's many people's lives that are with you in that Boeing. Guys, there's many people that God will put into your life as if you are the pilot because he trusts you he wants to trust you he believes in you but he must be able to trust you not just believe in you but to go from belief to trust you need to question your quality of the quality of me being a pilot in my life a pilot for many to find Christ a pilot for many to get into the Boeing and realize I can trust that pilot Hello? That people come to you for answers, that people look at your life and say, Christ is not a story. Christ is real. I need to follow him. I need to follow him. Are you here? Are you here? Then you don't, you need to take that serious. Not sit in self condemnation because of things that are wrong. Then I'm really sitting there. Then I'm, then I forgot the whole in. Encouragement, encouragement in correction. There's encouragement in correction or condemnation in correction. And when you find yourself so easily oversensitive and so easily justifying yourself, just know what is cooking inside is you and your that pride. Not one of us, but some stinking pride is cooking something there and it's poison. It's poison in the heart. Why would you want to destroy yourself? Your protection is God's discipline. Protection is God's discipline. Protection for you, Mr. Pilot, and the 300 or the 500 going with you up there into destiny. Because it's the God who believes in you. But if you don't take the dust discipline, he cannot trust you. He believes in you. You can be this excellent pilot. You can be that excellent man of God, woman of God, there where you are working, where you are studying. You can be excellent. But if you could give yourself for correction, give yourself not to justify yourself, but to question your quality. Because God don't put a question behind you as a child of God. Because he says, there's no doubt that you are my child. Because I say, you're not a fake child. You're a genuine child. That's why he brings correction. Because of your potential. Because of your potential. It's the Olympics in this, at this stage. But you know, when, uh, when I would tell some coach tomorrow, yay, me and Peter Jones, we want to do the Olympics next year. He may be going to say, I, I hear, ach, siehst doch. <laughs> but maybe some three others sitting here, when you go to the coach and say, we want to do the Olympics next year, he will look at you and work out a program for correction, for correction, for discipline. Why? Because he knows that you can make it. I believe in you. You can do the Olympics. You, can, you have the potential. Do you understand it? The only reason why there's discipline because there's a God who believes in you. Who doesn't laugh at you and say you will never make it. Through his son you can be excellent and have an excellent life. With a good works that has eternal value. Amen. Are you still here? So take courage. Do not lose courage and give up and faint when you are reproved or corrected. Why? Because many times when you are corrected. Corrected by somebody. By a pastor or a 
How did you feel when mother or dad corrected you? Amen. Okay. You were very encouraged by it, hey? Good, sir. Well, all that I'm saying is, guys, position yourself as a true child of God. Because God believes in you as a true child. He believed that you didn't fake when you gave your life to him. He believed in many prayers that you prayed that wasn't fake. And because many prayers that wasn't fake, according to God, because you giving your life to him wasn't fake, because your faith isn't fake. For many times when you sat with the word, it wasn't fake, according to God. That's why God will give you discipline. Unless you say, no, everything was fake. Then fight discipline. Fight correction. Okay, next one. For the Lord corrects who? And disciplines everybody with a lot of mess and mistakes. No. Everyone whom he, everybody say loves. And he punishes, oh, just nailing you. No. Every son whom he accepts and welcomes as his heart and as he too, whom he cherishes. You must be, you must submit. And oh, you must submit to and endure correction for discipline. Endure correction means there's more than one time that you will be corrected. Are you here? Endure correction. There's something else again. There's something else that I've done wrong. Another thing that I've done wrong. Okay, let's decide I'm going to make a hell of a mess of my life if it's not for God protecting me through His love and in His love there's correction. Why? Love is not just a feeling. It's an act of your will. Love is not just a feeling that is good. Love is not I feel accepted. I feel loved. I feel some emotion from God to me. No. Love, there's a certain standard to love. The world out there want to corrupt love and put it Next to lust and a lot of chamors. But love is pure. Love is pure. Love is beautiful. But for that beautiful love, part of love is God saying, I love you. That's why I correct you. That's why I bring you to a new level, a new standard, a new quality of lifestyle. And in this, if I don't love you, you can stay in the rubbish. But if I love you, I'm taking you out. I'm making you beautiful. I bring you into this beauty of this passion that I have that is called love. So understand, if you're without correction, uh, are you receiving his love? You know, God loved me, and I must love God, and I love my neighbor, I must love myself. You cannot love yourself. You cannot love your neighbor. You cannot love God if you not first receive the love. That has value. And with that quality, beautiful love, you love him back. You love yourself. You love others. But you need to receive it. And part of receiving love that is not cheap, no cheap Christian love, part of it is discipline. The encouragement, the correction. That's part of receiving the love that is not cheap. Amen. Therefore, be open. If you're teachable, it's like I can, I, I'm open to question the quality of my work, of what I'm doing. Next. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You must have endure. Yes, we, we are finished with that one. Let's go. No discipline. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Let's say pleasant, painful. Wonderful. Even the word says and sometimes it's going to many times be painful. If you never receive discipline, I'm not talking about the smack from on the behind, you know, the smack there that opens the ear here. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about people speaking to your life. And you never had people speaking to your life and it was never painful. You must be seriously worried. Why are you not being treated as a true son, as a true child of God? Then you are in the, right in the wrong place. You better position yourself in a place with one or two or three people and say, I need you to, I need to be accountable to you and, if, and I need to hear what I'm doing wrong. And if I don't like it, I'm willing to stay in this relationship. I will not take offense. You need that man, one, two or three in your life. 
You better hear from God. Who is the man that must serve you with discipline? Serve you by bringing you into the pattern that God has for you. Like Paul said, I am in labor till Christ is formed in you. Labor is not a party. Ask some woman who gave birth. Any lady here who gave birth? Huh, yeah. Are you here? So Paul, the leadership is supposed to carry you in prayer for Christ to be formed in you. You are still here. And you have no right to disciple someone if you don't love him. Because that's the standard. There's no right you have to question the quality of somebody else or give inputs if you not first of all decide that you will be motivated by love. And that love is not kuji kuji love necessarily. Are you with me? But is you are there for that person. It's for his benefit. Okay, and with the way with it we disciple, oh man, we make mistakes because we're normal human beings. <sighs> and sometimes with a passion, you try to bring that person into accuracy. And you're going to make mistakes, bottom line. Ask every mom and dad. Mm. But through the blood, tomorrow is a new opportunity. Amen? However, it's painful, not pleasant. But however, produce. They say, pleasant, painful, produce. Just decide what you want. What is the product? What is the product of your life? If everything must just be pleasant and you pray that everything is pleasant and God must open the door that everything is pleasant and change your circumstance that everything is pleasant, uh, what will be the produce? Go and think about that. Go and think about that. You don't even gonna go there now. But it will not be from God. You cannot manipulate His word. You cannot manipulate Him in prayer. Okay? But, however, produce a harvest of righteousness and peace. Oh, there's another P that we can go with. <laughs> okay? Produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Everybody say trained. Oh, man, you need to be trained. You need to be trained to receive discipline. Not just receive discipline, but to be trained. How to be open. How to question the quality. How? <sighs> To receive discipline when I don't agree. When I agree with you, and you're going to discipline me, and you're going to bring correction into my life, and I agree in everything, it's not something painful. It's not, not something that I struggle with. I don't have to practice. I agree with you. But why is it painful? Because many times you will not agree with what that person will want to change in your life and that's why it's a painful process when you question your quality especially when God does it through his spirit through through some leaders through some people in your life and you don't agree that's when it's painful that's when it's a struggle and that's why we need to be trained we need to train ourselves to be open I need to be trained to be open to be teachable to to have the capacity to change it's not just going to happen. It's not just going to happen. God must help us. Are you here? Therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees. Oh, feeble arms and weak knees. I am tired. And you are tired. Why? Because of all the work and everything that is expected of you. Everything you're supposed to do. Or is it because you didn't take the correction in the way God wanted you to take it? Many times we are tired, many times we are tired because we didn't take the correction. Because we didn't take the correction. So you're going to drive your bicycle. I don't know if they have it still today. They have different gears, my time. You know? The first red to the 12th red. What do you mean, Gears. Gear. The first gear, you know? You know that it's gears? Now, don't look at me like that. You know bicycle, you know gears, okay? So if you're going to do the first gear, and you're going for 120, and you're going to do the first gear, 
up the mountain at, ten, at uh, two kilometers an hour. You're going to be very stupid. You get into the car, you know, the vehicle, and you go first gear. Yes, first gear. I love the first. I like to be fast. I mean the first gear. And you go on the N1 and you go 120 kilometers an hour in first gear. Let's see what's going to happen to you. The engine is going to cease because of stupidity. Now, unfortunately, in the past, never in the future, the Christians will never be stupid again. But sometimes when we, but we go in the first gear and this guy's in the first gear and what he does and he's down, he's finished, he's tired at the end of the day. The other guy, he does the same job, but you know, he changed from first to second to third to fourth and even fifth gear um, in the going through the day, in the going through. He was open to going to the next thing because he could hear God and he didn't get stuck in an obsession of I'm correct in my first gear. It worked just now. Yeah, it worked when it was 20 kilometers an hour. It's not going to work when it's 100 kilometers an hour. I must be open to change. And then strengthen your feeble arms and weak knees because you're going to learn how to go from first, second, third, fourth, and fifth gear. <sighs> Are you with me? May God help you. May God help me. Because otherwise, to do the good works God has prepared for you, you're going to freck. You're going to die in there. Because you're going to be so tired in trying to do this for the Lord and doing the right things instead of hearing God. Hearing God. And going with that what He has for your life. We're still here. Okay, next one. So, whoever cleanses himself from what is ignoble and unclean that means khachi that what is wrong who separates himself from contact with contamination and corrupting influences will then himself be a vessel set apart useful honorable i just wanted to say i i'm open for correction but i don't know what is obel Purposes, consecrated and profitable to the master, fit and ready for any good work. Oh man, that is five Sundays. Go and sit with God about this powerful, powerful verse. Amplified, whoever cleanses himself, how can you clean yourself? You cannot, man. If you know how the blood is working in your life, cleanse yourself. Okay, focus. The blood. You need to understand the blood, how the blood needs to work in your life, how to respect the blood, respect the blood, that's why I forgive that man, respect the blood, that's why you forgive yourself, respect the blood, that's why you take your forgiveness from God and don't go into a performance, not go into performance, yes, you are not out of 10, give yourself 2 out of 10, yes, you are rubbish men, without Jesus, but in Christ, you excellently valuable, and why you receive, okay, are we here? Yes. <laughs> so, I'm excellent in Christ, with Christ. If I believe that, then I will allow the blood to cleanse me. The blood sees my value. The blood is when you know, when you see the receipt. Oh, this podium, whatever you're going to call it. This thing, oh, I see, it cost $4 billion. What the heck? Doesn't look like it. Four billion dollars. Now that's going to tell you how you're going to deal with this. If it's four billion dollars. Now this is the word of God looking at you and say, What? Diego. That's his value. Through the blood of Christ looking. But so looking in the mirror. Looking in the mirror. That is the value. Because hell and demons will tell you you are rubbish. The word of God will tell you your value. And because of your value, that's why there will be certain discipline to be corrected. Are you with me? Some excellent, excellent car out there. But you go with first gear. Your whole life. Everybody go there like this. 
Okay. It's that's when you're not open for correction. You will uh, in first gear right through your whole life. Okay, no, not anymore, in Jesus' name. Cleanse himself from what is unclean, who separates himself. Separate himself from contact with contaminating, corrupting influences. That's unfortunately many times, not just through a phone, but through some people. When you want to stand for God, and when God knows your potential, I mean, and the devil knows your potential, then he will send that corrupting corrupting contaminating influences you start to have a certain attitude oh man the devil organized people with the same attitude just like that when you find yourself in a place you know i was leading the worship uh, for a long time um, and at one stage, it was most of the time me leading the worship in the church. And I wrote a lot of new songs. And, and we sing the songs. And then we had this leadership conference. And I'm leading this, uh, the songs. And there's about 100 pastors. And, but the apostolic leader who was my spiritual father. Um, he said, no, you know these songs. We must sing other songs. You know. And then people write songs. And then we must just sing their songs. Everybody knows who he's speaking about. There's only one guy at this stage. And afterwards, some guys came to me. How can he say that? That's wrong. And that's it. And he's this and this. And on right and wrong, I can agree with him. But I just had this check, this red light of hell and demons. The devil want to con bring contamination in my heart. That what I do, I will not do as if unto the Lord. But to go and hear from him. He was, we call him Duab. Duab. What did you mean by saying that? Rather go in here. Be open for correction. And hear the frustration that he feels we need to go to a next level. But I also have in my heart the desire that we need to go to a next level. His desire is to go to the, that we must go to the next level. Now what is going to bring us there? Not necessarily the, all these new songs. But if I see God's heart in it. And we see God's heart for, for the vocabulary on the lips of the church to lead them into that what is accurate, to lead them into that what is godly. Yes, we our heart can become one. Are you with me? Be open. Be open for correction. Separate yourself from contact with contaminating, corrupting influences. Then yourself, you will be a vessel set apart, useful. You are a vessel, but what type of vessel? Set apart, useful for honorable and noble purposes. You want to make bread? There's certain vessels, there's certain stuff there in the kitchen. You're going to open the door, you can doors, and you're going to use certain things to make bread. It's not because you hate the other thing that you're going to use when you buy eggs. What do you say in English? Make eggs. No, that was the chicken that made eggs. <laughs> fry eggs. You fry eggs. So when you fry the egg or, or bake the bread, you're going to use different utensils. Don't get jealous when God blessed this man with this and all that talents and all these abilities and all these giftings. And that's just to fry some eggs, man. No, 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 don't, don't say it in that way. That is to fry some eggs. Praise the Lord. And others with other vessels to make some bread. Distinguish the body of Christ. Don't get childish. Don't be childish, immature. Amen? With jealousy. But be excellent in what God has called you to be. To be that vessel that the moment God opened the cupboard and He takes you, He can use you. For what? For good works. Ready for any good work fit and ready for any good work fit and ready for any good work are you here that's why question your quality and don't fight correction right next one consider it pure joy everybody pure joy okay that's a juice with an attitude you know that juice pure joy yeah, be that juice with a good attitude. Okay, consider it pure joy. Why consider it? Why, 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 why? Because we just read now, 
Discipline is not going to be a joy necessarily. <laughs> it's not going to be joyful. When you have and hopefully have somebody in your life that must disciple you and so that you can disciple others, many times it's not going to be joy. Yes, there's Jesus Christ that said, For the joy set before him, he went to the cross. Yo, that was some discipline. Yo, that was something to put himself out there. He's the Son of God. He, within a trillionth of a second, he can say something and legions of angels will manifest. Boom! And he's off the cross. But he didn't do that. He died the perfect, perfect lamb. And in death, he was victorious. In death, he was victorious. Amen. And so for whatever God has for you, for the joy set before you, that means because you see the privilege. God wants to use me. He wants to use me, and that's a privilege. You cannot be a vessel set apart for God. So let you just give your life to Christ and die immediately and go to heaven. But why are you still on earth? Because God wants to use you in a lot of good works that you will do with him. He trusts you. No, he believes in you. And he wants to trust you. If you are cleaning up yourself through the blood of Christ and through the word of God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Consider it pure joy. Make a choice that it will be joy. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith, everybody say testing of the faith, develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature, complete, not lacking anything. Some or other child is immature, whatever, knoll. Not mature, not complete. What is that maturity? Not lacking anything that you know. For you to do the good works God has prepared for you. For you to walk in his will. You can have everything to do his will. God wants to supply to you everything that you need to do his will. To do the good works God has prepared for you. You will be mature enough. You will be complete. Not lacking anything to do his will. Not perfect like Jesus the Lamb of God on earth. The Son of God on earth. No, 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 not in that sense. But you have any, everything and no excuse why you cannot do God's will. But you will look at the facts and you can see I lack a lot. Why? Because somewhere I didn't, wasn't open to question the quality of what I do. Somewhere I didn't see that the testing of my faith through trials of many kinds developed wants to develop a certain perseverance perseverance is i am not submitted to my circumstances i'm not a product of my success i'm a product of his success my success tomorrow it's gone his success will stand forever and ever and ever and ever and ever are you with me oh please man Please, man, testing of your faith, develop perseverance. That perseverance, that, that guy, if he's walking with a coach and he does not like the coach anymore in what the coach asks of him, he will persevere. He will persevere. He will stand up. He will run this race. He will do this. He will, whatever is needed, he will do it. Certain character being formed in his life. Perseverance must do a work in me. Let's say perseverance must do a work in me. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature. Finish its work. So for you to persevere is not to persevere in your anger, not to persevere in your irritation, not to persevere in all your justifications. No, we, can, we know how to persevere in all that rubbish. But how to persevere with his word, persevere. It didn't work yesterday. It didn't work the day before. It didn't work, but I'm going to persevere till the word will work in my life. Because the word works. Amen. But some Hamor's word can work also in your life. Can work also in your life. Whenever you face many trials, and in the trial, the testing of your faith. Why? Testing of your faith because your faith is fake. No. Testing of your faith so that, faith so that you can see 
what is real and on that I must build. This is real and on this I must build. This is not real. This is wrong. This is not real. This is fake. On what can I build a life tomorrow that has eternal value? That's what I'm supposed to do, not true. Let's say I consider it pure joy. You know, not a fake joy, not yeah, 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 yeah. Pure, there's, there's a cleanness, there's a genuineness in that joy. You know, when I started with Creari and I was the only guy after medical school I, that I, God said, leave the medical school and I was for six months before going to the army, for six months, I gave a lot of classes, morning 7 o'clock to the night, I don't know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. And a lot of times I said, what the heck are you doing with your life? You know, when you hear this, uh, this one uh, song in the syllabi, one of the first songs in the syllabi was, Ek is vry om Jesus te loof. Hallelujah. But when you hear like 40, 50 students that didn't practice, Ek is vry om Jesus te loof. The D and the A. And you hear it half an hour after half an hour every day. Whoa, man. You think, what are you doing with your life? Nobody asked that in, your, or, uh, in the past. What are you doing with your life? Okay. But in any case, so after six months, I would go visit my sister in Holland. And all the six months of, of work brought me a certain amount of money that I at least can go and have some food in Holland and then go on an outreach to Romania with some YWAM guys uh, on a mission trip. Great. And the week before I had to leave, uh, the pastor, some pastor says, no, there's not enough uh, money in the church to pay the salaries of the pastors. Um, we just felt that we're going to use that, that money also to, to pay for the salary. We will give it back to you within a few months. I thought, how the heck? How can you do that? That is freaky wrong, not just wrong. That's, that's wrong. And at that stage, I didn't have 10 rand for petrol for my fola. So I had like a half an hour break, then I ran from Agape Church. I need to run to Hyper, uh, Hyper, Hyper Market. What? What do you call it? Pick and pay. Yes, I said so. Pick and pay, Hyper. And then go there, get some bread and something, and run back. How many of you guys in Kriari? No petrol, you need to run to Northridge to find some food and come back in time. Oh man, you feel so, will feel so sorry for yourself. Cry for, for a week. No, 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 I'm not better than you. I'm just challenging you. <laughs> what, <laughs> what I want to say, I don't know. I have a half an hour. I don't have 10 rand for petrol. I don't have enough for bread and something else to eat. Then I must go on with classes till half past nine, ten o'clock in the evening. <sighs> Siobhan's mother. They had class nine o'clock and half past nine. She and her friend. She always, they always brought me some food. They said, no, you look out. We don't get enough value for our money for this class. But, yeah. And so, I was walking. I was saying, at one stage I was walking. I said, God, this is not right. This is not right. And when you come back from Pick and Pay Hyper, there's this bridge. And when you walk over the bridge, there's Universitas Hospital. You know that bridge? over the bridge and and I said God this is not right this is not right and I was manifesting man a Christian tantrum and a, at one stage God said to me so you know he didn't say take courage my son I will provide for you for my kingdom but you will see my provision no he didn't say that he said so if there is no provision Will you still do it for me? Ash. <laughs> and I just started to count the lampposts. Just walk down the bridge and Stalsweg, I think. Down there, count the... I know the answer, but I don't want to give it. <laughs> and after a few lampposts, I said, okay, yes, Lord. But you know, I know that nothing is blessed by God if there is no joy in the offering. If, there's no, if I cannot count, it's pure joy in that testing of my faith. 
So I had to say it, and I did it in my life many times that I would say it over and over. Yes, Lord, I will do it for you. I will do it for you. Yes, Lord, for you and you alone, doesn't matter. I will do it for you. And you say it, you say it, you say it until you believe it, and then you say it because you believe it, and then you say it until you make the sacrifice in joy. Until the moment I saw it as a joy, as a privilege to develop people, even if I don't get a cent. I'm walking back because I didn't have 10 rand for petrol. God expect me to make a decision to get nothing and still do it for him with joy. You know, when I went back to the, the home, into my room, there was the check with the whole six months, all the money, check written out. God set me up. He will set you up. He's organizing the testing of your faith. Not the devil. God was going to do it. So, may you understand the privilege we have. Amen. Next one. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Many times, many times that phrase in the Word of God. But in Revelation, guys, before, before John is talking about a third of... The nations of the earth. That's about more than two billion. We have some other judgment that will be gone. Boom! More than two billion. That's quite a lot of people. And then again, a third of that amount that will be gone. Boom! Before all this freaky lot of intense stuff that will happen with earth and when heaven and earth will be shaken and the first time, the only time earth will be destroyed by water but the second time by fire. It can happen. It can happen tomorrow. With a few pressing of a few, whoop, it can happen. And uh, the world can blow up in flames. It can really happen tomorrow already. We have that capacity to destroy ourselves already. But you know, before all this stuff, before God showed John all this stuff is going to happen, he speak to the seven churches. And there's seven type of churches. It was seven churches, one in Porfa, other one in Bluefontein, one in there, one in there, in the Bible time. But it was seven type of churches. And then he's walking, he's walking through his churches. And he's preparing the church how they need to be ready, how they need to question their quality, how they need to be open for discipline and correction so that they will be accurate in the times of trials. So that when the heaven and earth is shaken, the church will not be shaken. Those who built their lives on the word of God. Are you still here? Now he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. What is that ear? That is not just this ear. What did somebody tell you when you were young? Hey, mark your word up. Open your ears. But God has given you an ear to hear. And that is your spirit that is reborn. And your spirit that is reborn when you gave your life to Christ is open and can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit testify in your spirit according to Romans 8. In your spirit you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit 100% accurate, clear. Clear, clear in your spirit. The problem is all the other Hamor's voices that we allow in our souls. You still hear. But God says to the church, this line is said to every church of the seven churches in Revelation. God will start with, this is me, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end speaking to you you need to know who's speaking to you what demon of what or what spirit is speaking to you who is speaking into your life you don't allow discipline and correction some other chamors will speak into your life they will not stand back demons will speak into your life you don't allow the spirit of god and leaders and people to speak into your life through the word other things will speak into your life but there's no place where nobody speaks into your life there is not such a place Either God or demons. So God says with every church, he manifests himself in a certain way and say, to say, understand who is speaking now to you. And then he says, this is good in your life. That is good. That is good. That is good. But 
I have the following against you. Against you that I'm going to throw you in hell. No. These things in your life work against me. I'm working against those things in your life. And those things in your life are working against me. Let's deal with these things. You forgot about your first love. The most purest love in your life. When you gave your life to Christ. You didn't experience that amazing, amazing love necessarily when you gave your life to Christ. Because it's not first emotional. It's first of all pure in your spirit. When God brought the rebirth of your spirit. Are you still here? Is not here? So what am I saying? What am I saying? Hallelujah. In your spirit you have an ear to hear. That's why God keeps you accountable. The church of Christ has an ear to hear. The world out there, they has not an ear to hear. But you have an ear to hear. He's speaking to his church. And only to the church, seven times to the seven churches, at the end he said, those who have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. If you are reborn, if you're a child of God, you are the sheep, and the sheep hear the voice of the shepherd, you can know his voice. You know his voice is in your heart. You better hear what God is saying to you. What do you need to correct? You with me? To the one church he says, Were you hot or cold? But now that you are lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Hot for the Lord? Cold for the Lord? Your heart hardened? No, 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 no. That's not what he said. He's using it in a context in that place there was water but the, you cannot drink that water when it's lukewarm it's like poison you're going to get sick with the lukewarm water but to explain to explain himself to the church he says you better be hot you better be cold if you're lukewarm i'm going to spit you out they understand perfectly what god is saying because that's how they use the water from that fountain that's lukewarm either it must be cold or it must be hot you make your decision, but you cannot wara wara in between. Tell your neighbor, don't wara. Okay. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Ne last one. Each man's work will become evident, for the day will show it because it is, will be revealed with fire, and the fire itself will test the quality. Everybody say, test the quality. So you better question your quality, because the fire of God will test the quality. Testing of your faith, test the quality. Of each man's work. If any man's work which he has built on remains, he will receive a reward. But if any man's work is burnt up, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Yet as through fire. You mess up your life here, yeah, but you're serving the Lord, but you mess up all the things that God has prepared for you to do. Okay, you can die and you will still go to heaven. As through fire. Because on the day that you stand there, what you've done has no eternal value. Everything will be burned up. But by God's grace, you'll be saved. As through fire, you will still go to heaven. But for eternity, 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 you'll know you wasted your life on earth. No condemnation. I don't know how that always going to work, but there will be no condemnation. But you just know for eternity that you've wasted your life on earth. Or today, I can grow. I can grow with God in His grace to, to say, God, help me. Help me, Lord, to get over this hamors. So tomorrow, Holy Spirit, bring the fire. Holy Spirit, bring the fire. Bring the testing tomorrow. Not only the day when I stand before the Lord. Please, Lord, by your grace, I allow you to bring your fire on my works and burn away everything that's not from you. Every idea, every dream, every, every strategy for tomorrow in what I do, every habit that I'm getting used to doing. God, is, if it's not from you, please, by your grace, send the fire of the Holy Spirit on it. How? Many times through people that will tune you, people that will bring correction, but the type of correction that will sometimes discourage you, that you don't like. You don't have that people, you're missing out on a life with God. Haggai 1 verse 5. The Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. Give careful thought. So easily in our thoughts we can justify ourselves. You know, why not? And why? Why you're right? He's wrong. You're right. Give careful means you're not going to just 
think about it in the right way. When there's discipline on your life, it's not like you're going to think about it the right way necessarily. Yes, yes. But give careful thought. Is go and sit with God. Go and sit with His Word. Go and sit in prayer. Go and sit with that lead, those leaders and say, speak into my life. No, that's good. Yeah, but tell me, what must I adjust? Where must be there be a change in what I do? Where am I not accurate? No, you're doing right. You're lying. Tell the leader. Because my name is not Jesus Christ. I'm not perfect in all my ways. So there's things that I must question. There's things that I need to change because I want to become more like him, less of me. More of him, less of me. Amen? Ach, ach, to no man. The Lord Almighty says, give careful thought to your ways. He, he's just two chapters, Haggai. He's talking about, you're doing all these things, but you're doing it for yourself. Did it work? It's going to be a chamors. It's going to be rubbish. You try to do this, it's going to not work out. This is not working out. That is not working out. Give careful thought about what you are doing. And then he says, look at the house of God. And bring what is necessary and build the house of God. I'm not talking about this building. You are the living stones. We are the living stones. L look at the church of God. Look at all the chaos of a lot of things and how the living stones fight one another. Let's get the house in order. Let's get the house in order so that when the house is in order, the house of God will be a house of prayer for the nations. And prayer is bring heaven down into the nations. When the house is in order, the connection, open heaven. Hello, through prayer. House of God, a house of prayer for the nations. You will see the impact from heaven into the nations when the house of God is brought into order. When? When we are open for correction. When you have the guts to question your quality. Because you are safe in Christ. Your identity is not in your works. Your identity is in Christ. God, come and do what you want to do in our lives, please. God, we receive your love. But show us, Lord, a love that is not cheap. Forgive us for saying that we love you. But God, many times it was cheap love that only worked when our circumstances was okay. Forgive us for that, Lord, but bring us into a love that has quality, a pure love of a higher standard where discipline and correction is part of it, Lord. Show us who's the people who must speak into our lives, Lord, that we will walk this road with if we like it or not. Help us to understand the correction with encouragement, Lord. I pray for every man and woman in this place to be open. And that all the voices of self-justification and whatever other chamors, that we will turn our backs on that, Lord. But that we will hear and that we will only have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. That we will not have an ear to hear what the voice of comprom compromise, the voice of lust, the voice of, of bitterness will say, Lord. But only the voice, an ear to hear the voice of God. I pray that for every man woman in this place, Lord. While we are having eyes closed, if you need to come back to the Lord, you know your life is not, not right with God. And you need to come back to the Lord. Maybe first time, maybe second time, like a prodigal son. I just want you to raise your hand where you are. If you know you need to come back, see that hand, see that hand. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, no. Let's pray. God, I pray for every man and woman in this place that's reaching out to you, that's coming back to you right now, that you will touch them in a special, special, special way. In a special way as they come back to you, Lord, that they will see and know what you have for them. Touch them this week in a special way, even if it's in dreams, in whatever way, Lord. But when they open your word, it will just explode in their hearts, in Jesus' name. Help them in that. Help them to take courage to get walk out of the sin. If they discourage with things that they are struggle with, that they will struggling with, that they will know victory is theirs. They will go into victory. Meet them in a special way this week, Lord like never before. I trust you for that, Father, that you come and you do that for them in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, and in that name alone. And all say, 
Amen. Amen.